Paris. Um, looking very cool with its bonnet on, actually, and I think that's probably the first time we've really shown it with the bonnet on. And uh, that was been my job, uh, I think it was yesterday or the day before, getting that bonnet on and adjusted. And uh, it's gone right, bit of a pain to get it adjusted right, um, just because it's uh, with the gas struts on it, it changes the adjustment slightly versus with them off. Um, but with the gas struts on, it's very difficult to gently adjust it because the gas struts try and force it against its, force it the opposite way to how you're trying to move it. So the easiest way is to take the gas struts off, shut it, and then adjust, and then do the bolts up with it in the right place. But it's quite difficult to get to the hinge bolts from the front with the bonnet shut. But anyway, we're about there with that. Uh, I've just got to finish adjusting the bonnet latches and make sure I'm happy with how it opens and shuts. Um, and then we're good good to go on that. And then one of the next things we're going to do is get the uh, grill made up for that. Um, but yeah, looking good on that. Um, right, Morris. Uh, I've been doing quite a bit of work on that this week, actually. Uh, interior assembly work for the final time. We kind of temporarily put a few things together in there for when the owner visited, so he could sit in it and sort of see the, the first inkling of its final finish. Um, but I still had to do some wiring. So I was wiring up the various switch packs in the center console. So there's the electric window switch packs um, and there's a, a bank of switches that do um, heated screen, etc. So doing the fire, final wiring for the um, electric window switches and just generally getting the layout of all the wiring that goes to the center console in its final form. Um, so I could get the center console together and that's now in for what hopefully will be the final time. Um, likewise, making up the little sub loom for the warning light module. So we, we had a little uh, warning light module um, machined from aluminium um, and it's got just some little warning lights for um, low fuel, oil pressure, charge, low brake fluid. Um, so that pod's now done and that was the last bit then to get the whole of that column shroud assembly done, which is all custom parts. So the whole column shroud, two pieces is 3D print, wrapped in leather. The top part is machined in aluminium. Um, that's all in situ now. Only the, the mount for the top, the top panel of the shroud is actually held in by the warning light module. And that itself bolts into a 3D printed clamp that goes around the column. Um, so there's only really one visible fastener in the whole lot on the top of the warning light module. Uh, so that's that, and then I've been um, getting everything ready for the final bits of upholstery to be done, which is the door cards, the rear quarter cards, all the rear bulkhead panelling, um, and the armrests on the doors. And it was basically trying to work out the very final um, layout for the leather. Uh, we'd done some sketches before, and we know we knew roughly how it was going to be. That's why we had the, the design the door handles to be the shape they are but it was just doing some final kind of fine line tape layouts to just see what worked and what didn't. Um, but I'm happy we've cracked that now. So it's going to be a combination of the dark and light leather that features on the seats. Um, it's all that lot's ready for Dean now. So on Tuesday, Dean's going to come over, pick all those bits up, take that lot away. Uh, he can crack on with leathering that. And he's, also, he's got the land cruiser bits already. So suddenly he's got a lot of work on from us at the moment. Um, and then Adam's just doing some finessing work on the bonnet latches. Uh, we noticed a bit of an issue with those in that where the pin on the latch goes into the kind of sliding receptacle. Because there's nothing to locate it underneath, the bonnet can move around a bit and unlatch itself, which is obviously not what we want. So uh, we're just doing a little circular guide underneath the latch part. So once it's gone all the way through the latch and latched, it's then held dead fixed so it can't move around. Uh, so he's on with that at the minute. Um, so yeah, good, good progress on that. Well, what else? The Morris, Adam and I were working on the bonnet um, been a bit of a pain actually to get the get that perfect i think Stu had it very close next door when he was doing the metal work on it but the latching um there was being temperamental to put it simply um there's a, it's quite complicated to get the alignment right on the bonnet um, and then once we'd got the hang of that it was latching but one side kept popping out so we've done some changes on the original latch pins i think they're vw the, the pins that go in um, and they have quite a chamfer on the back, so it's actually possible if the alignment's slightly off for them to pop back out because the, the slider plate on the latch actually ramps up the chamfer. So we've machined those chamfers out, done a slight edit on the latch plate so they engage slightly further, um, and I'm really happy with it now. Put the safety catch on, um, 
it's got to the point actually without the safety catch we could pull the release and the springs gave it just enough momentum that then the gas struts took over and took it all the way open um, obviously we've got the safety catch on so it will never actually do that in practice but uh, it opens really nicely now pull, pull the lever not much force on it at all pops up nicely onto the safety you come around here it's just one hand on the safety and then it comes up on the gas struts so happy with that now um, Dean's collected all of the interior panels that I think I was just doing the layout plans for last week so he's making a start on those now um, and there's a few other little um, bits that George is working on so he's just done a bezel for the radio um, this was always the plan where the radio sits in the console there's kind of a it's on a sloping section and to make that a standard din size head unit look a little bit more tailored to the interior we're replacing the plastic bezel that comes with it with a, a piece that we've custom designed to actually follow the shape of the of the console to make it look a bit more like a, a proper installation rather than just an off-the-shelf head unit put into a slot um, so he's done that i think he's 3d printed a trial for that um, and he's very shortly going to be scanning now we've set the bonnet position he's going to scan the front aperture so we can design this surround for the grill and we're also designing some little brake cooling ducts that are going to go in the sides each side of the spotlights on that Morris, uh, done a couple of bits on the Morris actually, the uh, grill area, George has been scanning the grill area, now we've got the bonnet on and latched and finalised in its position and the wing position is finalised, we've been scanning the grill area so we could make the bezel, we, you probably saw quite a few weeks ago we'd, we'd made a, like a plastic hex mesh for the grill area but we want to make a, a metal um, bezel for that um, and the best way easiest way to pattern that exactly is just to scan that whole area and then we can just draw it it's only a 2d piece but it, we can draw it in cad and just laser laser or plasma cut the surround then so we can work on the grill and also likewise we're going to do some little crescent shaped brake cooling intake ducts that sit outboard of the spotlights in that grill aperture so again same same cad scan can be used to generate those as well so um, we can crack on with those and talking of cad on the morris Finally, uh, the mechanisms in the doors that we've had metal 3D printed uh, have arrived. So George was able to do a, a mock-up assembly of those. All looks great. Um, and that was the final thing we were waiting for before we got the exterior handles machine. So they're just 3D prints at the minute. Um, but because in the 3D print prototypes, there's a little bit of play and everything, a little bit of inaccuracy. We wanted the actual metal components that go inside and form all of the latch pivoting mechanism all together with all the bushes that they go together with um, so we could then try the handle again and just make sure we're happy with the alignment and the angle before we actually get that machined um, but we are so we're pulling the trigger on machining those handles hopefully get them early next week um, and then that, that's the keystone then to the whole of the rest of the door build because we can't really assemble that handle mechanism very easily with all the glass in there so as soon as we got that in we can put the glass in window lifters finalize all that get the door frames on and then we can just carry on and get the whole the whole of the door build buttoned up so that's good uh, we did a little bit of a tweak on the air filter um, we made a back plate for it originally and got to hold our hands up but it was slightly too far back we'd offset it forward already but it was a little bit too close to the bulkhead and the plastic of the filter um, casing was just touching the bulkhead uh, so we've done a revised back plate that just moves it another 10 mil forward um, and to facilitate that we've had to go for a slightly shallower trumpet on the intake as well on the engine just because the curve of the filter if you bring it forward was hitting the edge of the trumpet so we've gone for a slightly shorter trumpet move the filter 10 mil forward and that's all good now so i've just mocked that up it's looking fine so we're going to paint the back plate and then get that on for the final time anyway for the moment morris uh we've been mainly on with the grill design um so we've been wanting to make the uh, bezel that sits around the radiator grill for that um, and I wanted to do a 3D scan so George has now done a 3D scan of the front he's been drawing that up on CAD we've done we've kept it really simple just done a 2D plasma cut aluminium surround around the around the grill um, with and we're going to bond on some little studs on little mounting plates on the back of that grill surround um, so that's been made that's just gone away for anodizing with a load of other bits and when that's back we'll be able to try that on there and bomb the uh, mesh into it so all good on that morris you can see it's on the turntables bobby's been setting up the alignment on that uh, and then uh, frustratingly i'm still waiting for the one part i think i mentioned before 
on the doors were waiting for a metal 3D printed part. One of them was okay, there was a fault with the other one. It's the part that the exterior door handle operates in. Um, so we're waiting for that to come back, uh, or the, the replacement one to come from the manufacturer, um, before we can finish the door builds on this. And that's because it's a domino effect, basically. You've got to get that in first, get the door handles in, and then you can get all the glass and regulators and frames in, um, and we can get that lot buttoned up. George has finished off his design for the little intakes that are going to sit here. So there's a 3D printed piece and the final part will be a nylon 3D print um, that is a, fills in that crescent between the spotlight and the grill, edge of the grill aperture. Um, and that is basically a brake cooling duct then. It just has a little spigot on the back to feed cold air to the uh, front brake calipers. Uh, so yeah, basically edging towards completion on this and Dean dropped the door cards off before Christmas. Uh, he's just got the rear bulkhead panel to do um, and that then buttons up the interior. Uh, George has been on with the door builds, finally got through the 3D print metal parts we've been waiting for, uh, which is essentially a, a bit that bolt inside the door here, which the new billet handles pivot on. They have also come back from anodising since last week. Uh, and that was the last piece of the puzzle really. So George has been on with assembling the doors. So he's got those mounts in, got the handles in, the mini lock mechanisms are in there, the central locking actuators are in and connected. Um, and then he's been getting the door frames in and assembled. These are billet parts which were machined some time ago. They've just been sort of sat waiting for us to have all the, all the parts of the puzzle in place. Um, so we've got those in which hold the modified frame. It's, if you sort of throw your, throw your mind back, normally there is a, 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 a divider here and a separate quarter glass. So this is not only a modified frame, this is a machine billet part to fill in that corner, mount it all and hold the wing mirror. Uh, and then it's custom glass as well. So yeah, he's been getting all that lot together, trialing the electric windows, uh, making sure everything opens and shuts properly and that the windows go nicely up into their channels when, uh, when the doors are open and shut, whatever. Um, yeah, and it's, it's all coming together. Still a little bit of tweaking to do. We've got to do the seals that sit along here. Um, we're just kind of in the mock-up build to make sure it all functions properly and then we'll move on to the final build where we'll do this put sealant around things to make sure this is all weather tight but uh, but it is looking very good and i have to say it's surprising how much more modern it's made it look around here um, i think perhaps the combination of the black frame and the single piece glass uh, and the handle sort of transformed it a bit as well and it, it's it's made more of a difference and this is the kind of look i would hoped it would have but it's made more of a difference than i thought it would uh, so yeah, very excited to see that lot come together. Um, what's the other thing on this? Oh, James has been doing some work in the boot, so we're just basically building and pl planning and building the panel work that's going to line the boot, um, which will all be upholstered. So there'll be a panel that covers the fuel tank, a panel each side, which will be upholstered. Uh, we're just doing a little panel at the back, which covers the, lock the actuator that releases the boot and some wiring that runs in the back there. Uh, and then there'll be a carpet that will be made to go over that. And I know that Dean's in the latter stages of the remaining interior stuff as well. Um, and one other last thing actually was maybe 3D printing at the minute is the gear knob. So we've done the design for the gear knob now. Um, there's a 3D print on at the minute, but it's, we just concluded it was a bit small looking at that, which is, illustrates the value of a 3D print because uh, it looked good in the, in the, looked good in the, in the drawings. Um, so that's uh, with 3D printing a, a bigger version now, a scaled up version, see how that looks, but I think we're on the right track with that. Um, so yeah, that, that kind of keystone of needing that 3D printed part in the door has now allowed a load of uh, parts to be completed. So this should transform pretty rapidly now. Uh, in the background over there, um, George is continuing the work on the Morris doors. Um, however, the big uh, thing on that this week is that uh, last weekend, Dean came over uh, and dropped off the remaining upholstery, uh, or the main, remaining upholstered parts. So there was the rear bulkhead panel, the sort of subwoofer surround piece that fits onto that, uh, the parcel shelf piece, and then there's the two covers that sort of sit um, almost where the rear seat base would, would be in a normal car if it had rear seats. Uh, one of which covers the battery area and one of them covers the remote servo area. So they're all there, so we, we've got everything we need now to so crack on. Morris, I've 
finally got everything I needed and found, found the time to start getting the interior back in. So uh, actually the last couple of days I've got all of the rear end in, we've got the rear quarter cards in, the covering panels that go over the battery and the remote servo, seatbelts are in, subwoofer surrounds in. That all went great, everything fits really, really nicely, very happy with that. Uh, and I'm actually moving forward to finishing off the carpets, getting the front seats in, got to get the kick panel and speakers in the front. Uh, we can finish the door builds now. We've had, we actually had a bit of a game. We were going to have uh, tinted windows. The owner wants uh, everything except the windscreen tinted. Uh, and I got a company out to um, do what I thought would be a fairly straightforward job of tinting the windows. And actually after two attempts, they did not manage to tint the rear window and essentially the guy who said he'd been doing it 10 years says that with decent quality tint film you just cannot get it to go around that sort of compound curve so at the moment we're going to carry on the build with untinted windows um, and then I'm going to come up with a plan um, I need to basically contact or find the manufacturer that still makes the Morris rear windows to see whether they can do us one with tint laminated into it because the side windows I can have made with tint laminated into them no problem because they're just flat, flat glass it's the rear one that's a bit more complicated um, which that would be a great solution if we can actually make get them made in tinted glass it was just never the plan and I kind of assumed that it would be a really straightforward job to just have the windows tinted with a film um, but it seems not although if you are in the window tinting business and you think you have a, a decent quality film that would go through that kind of uh, compound curve no problem then feel free to uh, get in touch and you're welcome to come and try and do the job um, so that's where we're at with that but on, at the moment with the plan being clear glass we can actually crack on and just get these windows in now so we're going to get the glass back in get the frames built interior cards in boom uh, we're ready to pretty much start testing at that point once we've got the glass in um, so yeah extremely excited to see this take shape over the coming days Okay, right, I'm gonna start uh, with Morris. Uh, I've been work, continuing to work on that this week. I think last week I managed to get the rear bulkhead panel uh, and probably the quarter cards in, I got the seat belts in uh, and the covering panels that sit over, well, it's the servo unit one side, the battery the other, and the seat belts come out through those. Um, I've been carrying on this week getting the camera wire in, so it's got a Gentex FDM, it's called full display mirror, so the, the rear view mirror is actually a screen. Um, and there's a camera in the back window for that, so I just routed the wire down for that. Got the mirror uh, bonded on, so it's, it's kind of a modern type attachment, so you have a little metal button that uh, bonds onto the inside of the screen, and then the mirror hooks onto that. Uh, got that all wired in wired in the reverse camera because it's got a second camera down on the boot lid to give you a, a view of the ground immediately behind the car when you're reversing and that like pops in as a little picture in picture on the display got that all wired up tested that it's all good um, as part of that also the there's a the front panel section of the headlining it's generally a suspended headlining but then there's a small panel that finishes the very front part uh, i upholstered that got that fitted um, and I wired up the interior lights that basically buttoned up all of that sort of front up in the roof section um, and then I wanted to get the kick panels in I'd already got the rear speakers in last week those rear cover panels we designed are actually held in with the bolts that hold the speakers and it's the same with the kick panels so there aren't any visible bolts it's, it's the actual bolts that hold the speakers in that hold them in and then the grills go over them um, so I got the front kick panels in uh, and then that was actually the last thing I needed to do to allow me to test the audio. Um, so I gave the audio a test, which sounds really good actually. Uh, it's Kenwood speakers, I think it's six inch two-way components in the back, five inch two-ways in the front. And then we've got that active Pioneer sub in the, on the rear bulkhead. Um, and yeah, it works really well. It's only a very small sub, but with it being such a small car, uh, it's, it's, uh, it doesn't need quite as much power as you would in a big car. And lots of sound deadening, so yeah, it sounded crisp. Uh, I've been working on that again this week. Um, maybe if we uh, creep round here, we might get a better look at it because it's always an amazing and exciting transformation when you first get all the glass 
uh, in a car. And obviously we've had the windscreen in for a while, but literally just finished fitting the rest of the, uh, the, w the rest of the windows. And it's amazing how sort of covering up those sort of spot welded flanges on all the window apertures just brings it together so well. Um, so yeah, I've finished the door builds. George had done a lot of groundwork on that. So it was basically going in for the final time. Um, sealing everything up, fitting the weather strips. Uh, I've been testing the central locking before we button it all up, so getting on, testing that, testing that the key will operate the central locking correctly. Uh, a lot of opening and sh shutting doors to make sure it's repeatable as much as possible. Um, and then I was able to get the glass in, get all the frames assembled, uh, get the wing mirrors on, um, and then with that done, it kind of made sense to get the rest of the glass in. So. Got the side windows and rear window in, which went really well. And now I've said that, I'm expecting they'll probably all shatter in front of me. Um, but <laughs> those three rear windows are probably the easiest to fit windows I've done in a long while. Um, so yeah, we are getting there. I'm kind of building up to getting the door cards in on this. Uh, we've just got to stick the boot lid back on, but the hinges, um, machine billet hinges we've done for those are here, so that's ready to go back on. Um, and then, yeah, I think we're uh, about ready to get it out on the road. So starting with the Morris, I've been doing the final door builds. Um, so I think last week uh, or the week before I'd made a start, <clears throat> but I still needed to do, I still need to bomb the glass into the lifter channels, which I've now done, uh, do the changes to the door cards or the cutouts in the door cards uh, for these lock mechanisms. Now we machined these quite a long while ago. Um, this little piece here, which basically allows you to manually actuate the locking from inside the car. Um, so it was just a case of cutting the leather through. We'd already cut the holes in the cards and then adjusting and tweaking the operation of those because this basically clamped onto the, the actual um, link rod between the lock and the actuator, the solenoid actuator. So it's just a case of shaping that rod so that sits perfectly onto it because the fit of this is very uh, a pretty tight tolerance in here so it hasn't got a lot of movement. Um, but yeah, that's working great. Got them both, both operational. They work nicely off the press, you know, the remote control. Um, pretty much buttoned up that. I've just got to strip the card off the other side. Now I'm happy with all the operation on that and bond that glass into the lifter channel. And then that's the doors done. A little bit of buttoning up of wiring under the dash there. Um, and we are about ready to go. We're just going to stick the boot lid on and I think we can uh, tentatively take it for a bit of a drive. 